for you today. We're going to wait for a few more people to jump on here, and we're going to get going. I hope you all had a great weekend. I hope you kept the news off because, remember, they're all lying. Don't listen to any of that stuff. But we are on a boat today. Big change. Not in the office. No monkey jumping around. We're actually on a boat. I know it's hard to believe Captain Dave's out on a boat, but I'm on a boat. And I'm with my good buddy, Jimmy Kingsmill. And today we're talking everything to do with gyro stabilizing binoculars. If you've had any questions, if you've ever wondered about, hey, is those gyro stabilizing binoculars really worth the money? You're going to get to find out everything that has to do with the evolution of gyro stabilizing binoculars here in Southern California and across all fishing platforms across the world. This has absolutely revolutionized fishing in Southern California and beyond, all over the place. Everybody's using these gyro stabilizing binoculars today, but it wasn't always like that. And my good friend Jimmy here, he was on the cutting edge of this whole gyro thing back in the early, early, early 1990s. I know a lot of you weren't even born yet, but in the 19, we were fishing back in those days too. We were. Yeah. I know it's hard to believe. We're old. But <laughs> but just so I want to introduce Jimmy. This is my buddy Jimmy. And he is, if you need gyro stabilizer, that's who we all go to. We don't mess around. We don't try to figure it out on our own. Just like I always talk about, nobody has time to figure anything out on their own now. You want to go to the experts. There is a, a handful of people that know a little bit about gyros, and then there's Jimmy. And this is where you go to get your most information. So we're going to talk about the, the evolution of these gyros and where we're at today with this whole technology. And so if Jimmy can take a couple minutes and just give you a little bit of background, I am blown away by what happened back in the early 90s and how this all came to be and where these things came from originally, which is kind of big news with what's going on in the world right now. Yeah, when was... you bring up this word. Russia, yeah, That's Russia, Soviet Union, the the USSR, the great yeah. fall of the USSR, and how it all came together, and how we got to you start using gyros, right? Yep. So give them a little bit of background. So, I grew up fishing with my old man, and and we'd have boats, and we'd chase the marlin up and down the coast, and that was our primary fishing practice. Once the once we were done catching our albacore and a few tunas and a few yellows on the kelps, then it would just be targeting. <laughs> swordfish and marlin offshore and uh, and you'd use your 7x50 regular Fujinon or Zeiss binoculars and and you would and you'd look for tailors and whatnot and, and when you went up swell you looked with the naked eye because it was everything was moving around and you couldn't see much going up swell so um, I would fish tournaments with the we'd fish the Catalina Classic and and the uh, Drambui Remember, we had Todd on Friday, and he was talking about back in the day in the 90s, there was a ton of big time money tournaments at Catalina. Yeah. Really. It was a big deal. There'd be 120 boats. You couldn't get in. There's a waiting list to fish these marlin tournaments off of Catalina. And you'd have uh, Mike to be Kurt, Billy, Miyagawa on the Gambler. I mean, all the heavy hitters were were there. It was Sea Bandit, all the, all the old school guys, um, Sea Call. The Binghams. Yeah. Um, and it was 1993, I think it was. We were fishing a tournament. I was crew member for uh, Mike Hurt, the Beak. Right. And he, we had this guy that was, he was, I didn't know at the time, but he was a military surplus dealer out of Oceanside. Okay. And, and he's tugging on the Beak's shirt sleeve saying, hey, man. Beak, you got to check this out. You got to check this out. But Beak was walking through the crowd. You know the Beak. He's yeah. in, he's in the crowd. And he's he's the man. He's you know yeah. six foot seven, towering over everybody. And and the guy was was very persistent with him. And and the Beak turned to me and he goes, "Hey Jim, check. You know, see what this guy wants." <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, he gives me this thing, and it was a Russian Pelling gyro stabilized binocular, hard plastic uh, eyepieces that were this super horrible abrasive rubber eye rings and he goes oh go give this a try crazy right and so we're shotgun start on a 32 foot brand new 32 foot lures when those first came out the newer lures came out right and the jaspers had bought that and i'm in this bucket and 
I had Shiano with me. The B. I just picked him up at the airport. And uh, and so we go, shotgun start, we're running, and, and on the pins and the things, 25 knots or something. That was huge speed back That's, then. Yeah. That. And so we're running up the Lee of Catalina to fish the West End where the fishing had been. And I scream out, I got one, stop the boat. <laughs> Every, they pull it back and I'm in the glasses going, it's right there. Can't you see it? <laughs> and at the time, no one knew how far you could see with these binoculars, gang. It's amazing how far you can see. And so I go, right where the bird dips down. There's a sleeper. It's sitting right there. Can you see it? And you mean that bird that's like 300 yards up there? I'm like, oh, sorry. <laughs> and we kept going and going, and there it was. And, you know, we ended up that we ended up winning that tournament. We caught a couple sleepers, and it was off to the races. Like, oh, my God, I, you got to got to get more of these things it was, it was insane and that was in 90 what that was 93 wow and wow. Uh, and and what this kind of the story was from the uh, military surplus dealer was he said that the fall of the soviet union in 1991 two years before all this military surplus just hit the global market and so these devices were available and i could get them for anywhere between 500 and a thousand dollars Imagine that, gang, getting a pair of these things and they nowadays. Took, they took, a, you had a battery cord. I had a, some kind of military connector. I spliced into a cigarette lighter, and that would work. And it had this pack, a plastic pack, that you could sort of fit six AA batteries in. You had to cram it, and it kind of warped it because I have some kind of <laughs> Soviet Union battery they had. But we made them work. And, and literally on that weekend... I was so amazed with what they could do that my eyes, my, my nose was bleeding right here on the roof of my nose. Cause I was, had to cram the binoculars against my face and the Russian, that rubber was not the rubber very was good. bad. And so it's literally in future weeks, it would be just put a, wow. Oh put a bandaid across your nose and go fishing, but it was, but it was so thing. good. You oh, didn't care. Right. Yeah, it was off the charts. But anyway, so it's that, um, with that said, um, we, we use those, uh, those devices for maybe six years. And we, if we'd have a little part break, you would have to buy another set for 500 bucks and sabotage the part and make it work. And, and it used to have a thumb switch on it. That was so brutally painful to your thumb after about 10 minutes of holding it up. It was spring loaded. The spring was, you, know, you just, we ended up putting matchsticks. I'd have a box of matchsticks, wooden matchsticks and shove it in the switch and then it would hold it up so you could glass the whole day long. And, you know, as it turns out with this device, it, it just started going from fishery to fishery, you know, back in the, in the mid nineties, you, we'd go up and salmon fish in my skiff in the, in this crowd of hundred of boats. And this one guy is getting bit all the time. And you're like, what the hell is he doing? And so you could glass the guy. And you could see what And he... he was pulling out the line, like how many pulls on the reel to depth. And you just, so you go, okay, I got his depth. Oh, you know, and then he's got a, oh, he's a blue and green apex. And it was just like, oh, instant, boom. And we'd change our Gather depth. Gather that info right change now. Change our depth, change our lure, and got him on. You know, you can, it's the same thing with marlin fishing or whatever. Somebody hooks a fish on a lure, and you're like, oh, you know, I'm going to go close enough where I, let's, let's go see what kind of lure he's using because if you're not getting bit or you're not seeing yeah it's kind of like you say it's instant instant information, information gathered, gathered then, right now and then and, and then as the you know in the 2015 and the el nino and the big tuna that showed up and then you had afternoons where where it's like cloudy and you can't see the turns because the overcast and but in the gyros man you just oh i got the i got the turns and they're hauling butt to a to a spot, and you just follow them, and the, oh, voila, there's a... There, there they are. There they are. Oh, they're a game changer for sure. When I started um, using them, I couldn't even believe it because I'm an old guy, and <laughs> I had them regular old field glasses that we use forever. We call them field glasses now. They were Zeiss, and they were like the... the sh they were it. They were like seven, dollars $800 for a pair of binoculars, and you thought these were it. Yeah. But like you said, you couldn't look at them going up swell. You, you could didn't, you couldn't look yet. at them in the trough too well because you were just trying to hang on. Now with these things, and we're going to talk more about them and show you what we're talking about, but as these things came along, 
you guys were like killing it in the tournaments, right? They, uh, people awesome. couldn't understand how you were seeing all yeah. these fish all day. So we were, it was really an advantage. You could get to, there was a lot of people marlin fishing back in the day. And not um, not so much anymore because it hasn't been that great of fishing. What we, oh, the latch up top, oh, brother. Hey, let's just rip the door off. <laughs> Guy's hosing the boat down next door. I'm trying to break Jimmy's boat because <laughs> I don't go on boats very often anymore, oh, so it's hard to figure out how the doors work on a boat. <laughs> oh, where, where the heck was I before we? You were talking about your advantage in the tournament. Uh, so, so we would. Um... Okay, I completely lost my spot. That's okay. It's the guy. Somebody's washing a boat. It just <laughs> threw us off. We don't do that. <laughs> so we were, um, with that advantage, I mean, as we kept developing the product, it was different stuff. But when that was one of the things that got me involved with the tournaments with Steve Lasley and Pete Grossbeck was, was Steve was in the mid nineties. He was, uh, doing his swordfish harpooning with two airplanes and full, the Mirage program and it was really going. And, and when we would go out to the zone where we'd look for a Marlin, I'd see jumping swordfish or finning swordfish. And if they didn't bite, I'd call Steve. And he was like, dang, how are you, how did you find that fish? fish? And so anyway, we became friends. I, you know, he harpooned a bunch of swordfish in the zone and it went from there. And he was, you know, seven by fifties ice guys swore he'd never change. And then I, Got Let him take a look through yeah, the Yeah, I those... got him a set of gyros and uh, of Frasers, and he was like, oh, boy. And uh, So when did Frasier come into the game? Because so, you guys were using Russian surplus stuff, right? We were using Russian surplus de uh, devices. Okay. And uh, we did learn about, there was, Fujinon did make a good pair, but they were like six or $7,000, and it was like, whoa, that was, that's out of our budget, and I didn't care for how they were such a slow scan rate. They were good gyro, but they were super slow scan rate, and I didn't like it, because I like to scan a little faster, cover a little more ground, and so... Um, so when they came into the market? So it we was actually... It was actually Anthony Shea's cousin, who was Ray adept. Ray Shea yeah. was adept at computer and the internet and all that stuff. Where I was, that was and foreign. So he, does. so he go. He told me about. It. He goes, "Hey, I found this company with the with these gyros, and they're called Fraser Volpe." And I called the guy at Fraser Volpe, the salesman. And I said, "Hey, I think I got you know something you can do. Can you send me a demo?" And I. He sent me a demo. It had crosshairs for military targeting and uh, laser filtered lenses. And oh wow! I had a, on the touch pad here was you would cage and uncage the device by pressing down here. And if you held this up, looking through them with it uncaged, which is the format that you would be looking at the at the water. It, your forearms would start catching on fire. You're like, oh my God, I can't. And as soon as you let go of it, it would. Fix, and there was no fix oh, for it. Oh, wow. Because we used to jam the stick, the pot, the match stick in the switch of the Russian pellings. So that would work. But this, there was no fix for this. And so I called the guy up and I said, look, we got to do something with that touchpad. That's not going to work for us. Take the, take the crosshairs out. Give us a thumb switch that'll be uncaged and viewable without having to squeeze the device. And so he did that, sent me a pair, and I go, these are perfect. I love That's them. That's what we're Super looking fan for. Scout, two AA batteries, last you 12 hours, on and on and on. I was like, oh, this is the bomb. And I told, I made a deal with the guy. I said, look, I can sell nine of these things, but you got to give me morning. In, in less than a month, and you got to give me one. And he said sure send me out 10 units i sold <laughs> nine of them in two weeks oh i'm sure you and did jim and it was like everybody knew jim had some ace in the hole when he was just going to the podium every year so anyway that was the beginning of it and that was about 99 or 2000 and and we just kept rolling with that and fraser volpe switched to fraser optics and then fraser optics was this commercial side, this Mariner, was called a Mariner, the first set, 
with the yellow boot. The yellow boot was really nice because we have dropped these overboard at 28 knots. And you know, they float. They flew off a beanbag, bounced off the hard top and into the water. And I I was like, oh, crap. We did, Was that binoculars? And I looked up on the hard top where a guy was sitting in a beanbag glassing. He'd gone down to take a leak. And the gyros were in the beanbag. And when I punched it at 28 knots, it jumped them right out the of there. And my tower guy... I literally chopped the throttles. He turned around and he picked up the gyros that he had in the tower and he goes, I got them. <laughs> so the yellow was just game jab. They were black because they barely float. They them. barely float. They're really. And so we have black ones. You can get black ones. Um, and there was a time where we sold, we didn't have yellow boots. The, the manufacturer during COVID. Okay. We couldn't get yellow boots. And so there's a, a a run of units that has the black boot on it. So, but basically the same piece of equipment. Um, and so going back to the Frazier, they just in December um, called me and said, Frazier Optics is no longer supporting um, commercial sales. Oh and, no. So, and, <laughs> and this was kind of a, We'd always been on the side of their military R&D. They were doing all kinds of weapons guide and stuff and had a bunch of engineers doing different things for the military. And so basically all the sales that I'd been doing for 20 years, you know, that money was going to R&D. Oh, okay. So they weren't investing anything so back in So they weren't them. investing in, in us. And so it's been so, I, it's been, I've had more orders in the last 10 years than I can produce product for it. So I haven't advertised. It's only a word of mouth deal. And now it's kind of a situation where I need to go out. We need to get some sales generated. Um, we've, the old CEO of Fraser Optics is still there. We took the four most tenured people. People. There's a, a, a Russian guy that's like in his 70s and he repairs every single one of them. Oh, wow. And that's all he's done for 40 we years. We need to teach someone how to do that. So, well, Tony's there. Okay. And Tony's a younger guy. Tony can kind of do, Tony's our guy that kind of does everything. Uh, and Yelena is there. She's ordering products and she has her niche of how she builds stuff. And then there's another, uh, there's an Asian guy there that I met. I can't remember. If, uh, no. His name escapes me, but all he does is balance motors. So he gets the, the sphere and the ring, and he balances on a machine, and he hand balances every single device. Wow, so that's every a big deal. And, and Yelena or Tony will set the prisms, and there's a jig, and just certain tools that they've been using forever and uh, super unique to the product. And, yeah. And so we have those people. And they've re-established under the name Gyro Binos. Okay. So if you want to um, order direct from the factory, you want to order from gyrobinos.com. Here's some of the, the that, features. That, that right there is going to be me. I'm Gyro Pros. I can still get devices. I can... Uh, and, and if you need accessories or parts, please go to my website, Gyro Pros. If you want a device direct from the factory, which I recommend, um, is that right now your website? That is, I think that's me. Okay. And you know that guy. Yep. There's Anthony Shea and Steve Lasley. The they're on their world tour right now, and I guarantee they have a couple of pairs of those going. On then you know this guy. Pete Grossbeck, yeah, Barry okay. Breitenberg. IGFA Hall of Fame, Pete Grossbeck, and the other guy was Steve Lasley. And then uh, here's a handful of pairs of – that's how most of the, the big boys are fishing with these things right now. you gotta you got to have, have four pairs. Gang, if there's anything – like I say a lot on our show, if there's anything out there – I've run yachts with the bitch in his sonars you could have. I've run yachts with the Omni. I've run yachts with giant bait tanks that hold 100 scoops of bait. I've run sport boats. Once you start fishing with a pair of these binoculars, gang, it's over. 
you cannot it, you can take my bait tank away you can take my sonar i but if i don't if i'm going out and i don't have my gyro stabilizing binoculars my mariners i don't really i feel like i'm fishing naked blind well, you i'm fishing blind once i the, the east coast guys are going to Pan panama costa rica and Tony Carrizosa and Lasley get on their boat and they win the Triple Crown almost every year. Because they don't have any of these binoculars. Because they've, you know, they've got all the dredges, they've got the Omni Sonar, and they've got multiple sets of gyros. Gyros, not one. And, and it's such a it's such a game changer with everything that you do. When you go out, and like for all the Southern California guys, and you don't and you go out, you're gonna just follow boats. If you don't have gyros, you're following boats. Right. Because the guys that with the gyros that are you think are far enough away, they're looking at the water you're sitting in. But you can't, you're not seeing that piece of water. You're seeing so much farther. You're seeing, like, ever since the the shearwaters, you know, started hanging out and the tuna schools, you could follow the shearwaters. Which way do we go? Well, here we are. Which way do we go? And oh, then you go, oh, way, those birds are all going west. Which way are the shearwaters Look going? at, they're oh, going I west. I see miles of shearwaters, and they're going that they're, way. They're We're going, going to west. The, they're going to the fishes out. And something that we don't talk about enough is when Jimmy or I or any of us are in these gyros, yeah, we're scanning, looking for fish. But also, if we see a boat turn, we kind of look over there to see, what did he just turn on? We can see what he turned on a mile and a half, two miles in front of him, go, okay, all right. I already know where he's going. Now I know what what's out here, right? Well, you can, if you see the boat, if he, goes, if, information. He go, if he goes out on the bow and he throws a bait and he's circling, he just baited a swordfish. If the wind's blowing and he goes to the bow and he pitches a bait, he just baited a tailor. Taylor. So he, he don't have to talk to the guy to know what he's doing. Nope, not with these. And you can see that four miles away, which is incredible. It's, yeah, no, we'll, we're, we'll see, like, Back in um, when I was working for Anthony Shea, we'd come down here to Cabo. We just delivered the 60 Hatteras um, bad for the first bad company edition. Um, and we would we could go 30 miles out of Cabo any direction we want. And I'd get in the tower with the gyros and we'd start seeing sleepers. And then we'd you know, catch two or three sleepers. And we're, okay, I just saw a porpoise jump sky high at, you know, two o'clock. And so turn the boat to and start running because it was about eight miles away. And that would be and the we, tuna. And, and that would be the tuna. And you just would literally run eight miles. We'd mark the spot, run eight miles, and you'd get to about four miles, and then you'd start seeing the whole school. The school. Isn't but that incredible? It, all it takes is one snitch. Snitch. As Grossbeck calls them, the snitch. That so, one animal gave up the yeah, whole pot. Yeah, one dolphin, not a porpoise. <laughs> one dolphin. One dolphin jump. But gang, these in, these are just like you can't even comprehend. And there are different types of binoculars out there on the market. And those... Uh, techno stabbies. Tech, techno stabbies. Those things, they're not these. They're not. They're, they're not, not the these. There's a reason why these are seven grand, right? Well, no. These are the... So the refurbished ones that okay we're redoing these mariners we can't get all the parts new anymore okay but we can get motors we can get glass and so we can build we have about a thousand of these to build the oh wow to build that's a, a big deal because i remember you would call me and go hey i got two pairs if yeah. you can get to my house so yeah because they're gonna both be sold if i put the and i'd go hauling ass over to your house and you'd open up yeah. your closet door and so pull the out supply a pair. chain so we've got frames and whatnot that we can build off of it's just a matter of we've got to front the money to get glass and we got to front the money to get motors if there's no 30 due in 30 days and, and it takes almost eight weeks to get the parts okay and we have got to pay in advance and so that was what uh, we did just a couple of months ago is uh, we, I fronted a bunch of money and the new guy fronted so, a bunch of money and we've got parts coming in. And so there's going to be some in the next six weeks or in, something? No, eight in the weeks? next, no, no, we've got sooner units will be shipping probably mid next week. We'll have, uh, MIB refurbished with a one year warranty and the S250. So the S250 is a little bit different device. So it's got the same motor. It's got the same. Uh, glass, same prism setup. Uh, however, the difference is is that these work. The old school Mariner is two AA batteries, lasts about twelve hours. Right. So the new device 
and it first came out called a bylight, and it was all kind of a plastic unit that was to try to yeah, make it I super light for the soldiers for packing it, you know, so they could have it, and it wasn't too heavy. But and it had we, that one, two, three battery. It had a, a CR one, two, three lithium battery. Right, that lasts maybe ten hours, kind of deal. And you couldn't find them at ninety percent of the stores. It, they were expensive, and really, all most of the guys in Costa Rica and Panama are like the, the Mariner because, or the M25E because it has the AA batteries and you can get AA batteries down there. You can't, you, it's very difficult to find the, the CR123 battery in Costa Rica and Panama. So that's part of the reason I actually like the heavier unit better than the lighter unit. But the, the S250s, the military made Frazier Optics rebuild the, the by light. Oh, okay. Because it wasn't holding up, they didn't, it wasn't as durable. And so they re-engineered the S250 off of the Bylight frame. It's a single piece frame. These older ones are two piece frames. These are actually oxyed together and dunked in water for 24 hours before you get them back. Oh, wow. Just to make so sure they don't leave. They're mil spec. Okay. So that was part of the mil spec requirement. And so these, when they service them, that's why it's pricey to service them is because they got to crack them apart, glue them back together dunk test them, field test them, and then ship them back. So that it's a process. And make sure there's no yeah. foreign objects right. inside that case, <laughs> and right? The, and the S250 is a single piece frame. It's easier to service. Okay. It's a little quicker. And so, but they re-engineered all the parts that they you made out of plastic. They redid them in aluminum and they machined them. Nice. So it's tougher. It's a stronger, right. better unit. And then the other other I thing, threw out that seven thousand dollar price tag, and you were like, "Whoa, wait a minute!" So yeah, what's so the, the difference? So on the S two fifty is an all new product. The rebuild one is thirty six hundred now. No way! For, uh, that is incredible to get a pair of these for thirty six hundred bucks. And so, and we they come understand. with a one year warranty. And then the S two fifty is just under five grand, and that has a two year warranty. Okay. And the S two fifty, the one slight difference that some of the guys uh, like is that some people have narrow set eyes and the the you can push these as far together as you possibly can and, and they still can't get perfect lined up okay uh, view. so you're still seeing double so the s250 will go a little narrow if you have narrow set eyes i recommend that you go with the that's with the good S250. to know and then okay so we got some prices now as far as taking care of these because there's guys that are watching that have these on their boat, and there's guys that are thinking about getting them, I'm sure. What do we do? How do we do we set them down like that pair of black ones there? Is that how they set on the boat? So or do you, you can is set there a them, way to set them set better? Them, so what you do is there's this is a, this is important. This set here that motor is is my personal set. It's over twenty years old. Okay. I've probably serviced them three times and it's um, Thousands and thousands of hours, thousands of hours. Oh yeah, and and I've had to service it three times. Um, so these are eye shields. These are kind of an aftermarket deal that helps it supports the device on your face, so you're not you can hold the device with one hand. Like we showed in that picture right there, you yeah, can get so those. They, they come with the eye rings. That's what the it comes with. Right, right on the. You just pull those off. In and the you, picture on the left. There. Yep. If you buy a eye shield separately, <clears throat> it it rests on your face, and you can. It's all about staying in the glasses for long periods of time. Is you can hold this up, put one arm under your other arm, and hold it up with one hand. And this is where the Fujinon Stabby Scope and the and the Bylight or the S two fifty are not as good. Because it doesn't do this. allow you, you to can't hold it. With one hold hand. it. It just you have to when you have the other devices. You got to kind of push with your arms back to to get proper alignment, and it's it's just harder, more fatiguing. Right. So if you can do this with one hand, it's nice because you just switch off and you're just you're in them. So, but I recommend this for for the guys that are doing a long time. The eye the eye rings are good. For guys with glasses that want to look through with glasses, or if you're just doing spot checking, like if you're near shore fishing, like you're fishing the island at sea bass and you add a fleet or whatever you want to see at the other end. If of the they're fleet, getting if a nibble, if they're getting bites, um, just use the eye rings so you don't 
worry too much about the peripheral or long holding the device up for a long time. But really all you got to do is uh, take the battery out if you're going to be a long time before you okay, before you do uh, a trip again. And then this battery door, a lot of guys will call me and say, oh, my device, it just quit, doesn't work anymore. You have to just make sure this is see, this is watertight. So, so you have to push it uh, firmly in and then turn the knob and make sure that's perfectly seated so there's a good contact with the batteries. That's usually the, the problem. Number one reason. And if why we can't don't. get it going with that kind of solution, then we got to send it back to Pennsylvania and have work on it. Okay. Um, Brian and Anthony at Baker Marine in San Diego. Right. They are, um, so they service these. What Frazier does is Frazier will balance motors and place that motor in the gimbal with all the jigs and special tools they have to make it perfect. You send your device to, to Brian or Anthony at Baker Marine. They'll have a stock of pre-finished uh, gimbals with motors, and then so they'll take your gimbal motor out, put this new one in, and then they can service it that way. Perfect. So that, that's, that's good because that's right there in San Diego, so you don't have to wait. So they can do it, yeah, as long as you're not in warranty. If you're in warranty period, you want to go back to Pennsylvania, ship it. Okay. Um, you go to uh, info at gyrobinos.com. Do we have that graphic here? I don't remember. So as opposed to going to, just go to info at gyrobinos.com and tell them you're having a problem or this, you know, describe the problem, have your serial number ready, and then they'll send you back, uh, Tony or Yelena will send you back a, uh, an RMA number, put it on the box, go to UPS, send it, send it back, and they'll get on it. Okay. So then I've got a pair of these binoculars. Well, no one's ever explained. I know a lot of you have these, and no one's ever explained to you the proper way to use them. I'm lucky because I got friends like Jimmy and Steve and Pete, and they're like, Hanson, this is what you do. This is the optimum way to look is to have three guys looking. One down one side of the boat, one down the other, and one. But if you're by yourself, what's, what's the number one thing you think people do wrong when they're looking out these binoculars? Um, Too fast scan? Not spending enough time looking at the water. What What really, do you think? Really, everything is condition based. You know how how far you can look and where you want to look and what you're looking for. So, like when we're um, when we're looking for marlin or something protruding from the surface, um, you want to. There's areas that you can focus on near and far, and you go to the glare side of the boat. So. When you look with the naked eye, you can't hardly see anything on the glare side of the boat. But when you have gyros, you look to either side of the sun and that glare, the gray on the water, and then the sun is behind whatever is going to protrude up. And whatever protrudes up, it's going to be black. It's going to be a shadow. It's going to be in shade, you know? So when it comes up, when it, so let's say it's a marlin fin that sticks its fin up, the blue fin, right? The sun's on this side, so it's but black. I'm way over here. I'm a mile over here. So that fin's going to stick up black as could be on a gray surface. That's, That's some pretty bitching info right there, gang. This so is... when you see that fin, you're going to see, you know, a tailing marlin a mile away, a finning swordfish a mile and a half, two miles Think away of that. in the glare. That's Mind amazing. You, when you're looking either side of the sun. So when you look on the other side of the boat, I call that the blue side of the boat. And so when you look on the blue side of the boat, you have to make adjustments on how far you look. Because when the fin sticks up, it's blue and the water is blue because the sun's lighting the fin up and it's blue and the water is blue. And your brain, your eyes might see the fin, but your brain's not going to register that it's saw it. You, okay. You with me? I got gotcha. you. Because your brain sees a blue. lot, just blue, that's it. it. The fin will stick up, it'll be there. But your brain's not going to process it. Your eyes saw it. So you shorten everything up on the blue side of the boat. So you're going to look closer to the boat. And when a blue fin sticks up on a blue background, you're going to see it. Okay. You're just not going to cover as, mu as much ground. So you're going to be looking on the blue side of the boat. You're going to see a fin a half a mile away. On the glare side, you're going to see a mile or more away. 
Oh, that's that is some really bitching info. That's some cool shit right there. So it's like. and it's the same thing with uh, seeing breezers. Uh, you're gonna look in the glare and you're gonna see the disturbed water better in the gray because the, the water's gonna the the breezer's gonna turn the water darker color than the rest of the water, and so you're gonna be able to really reach out and see far on the glare side. I don't know how good it is for my eyes looking at the glare, glare. for. 30, hours 30 yeah. years so <laughs> but but it's caught a lot of fish it's caught a lot so of fish in that <laughs> and then it's something that i get at this question a lot from a lot of members on our website is dave what's the best way to find kelp patties oh my god and i'll tell you what you gotta look the very best there is no super secret yeah we find some current breaks but usually when there's kelp patties in a current break that they're full of garbage because there's 10 of them in a row so that doesn't really work. But the key is looking, spending yeah. the time in the gyros looking. Yeah. And now you're going to look a little bit farther, right? You're a not going to be farther. looking. You're not going to be looking so close because supposedly when you go out fishing on your boat and your friends are with you, you go out looking, they're supposed to be helping you look. They're not, everybody's not supposed to be looking at you going, did you find me one yet, Jim? Did you find me one? They should be looking and they should be covering the close stuff because they don't have these. Because not every boat has three or four pairs. Let's right. be honest. Most boats are going to have one pair, and that's going to belong to the guy that paid the money. He's not letting anybody, oh, let me look at those. Let me look yeah. sideways. I mean, it's just such a game changer no matter what you fish for. And I guarantee you that there were many, many, many days when I was running the wild and sack where we saved the day with our gyros four, five miles away kelp patty. The size of a trash can lid. But it was there, and you knew, and you knew which, when you find it, the number one thing you, no matter what you're looking for, the first thing you do is you say, I got one, and you say, look where I'm looking, right? Look where I'm looking, and then look at your compass, and see which direction I'm looking, because Jimmy's seeing a marlin fin a mile and a half away. He's going to lose it, but he knows, if you looked at the compass, it was 120 degrees, so now we're going to turn the boat. We're all going to be looking that direction. Jimmy's going to be. But when you're finding a kelp paddy five miles away or four miles away, it's like, look where I'm looking. Okay. It's 180 degrees. Now I'm going to stay looking at the boat's going to turn. All of a sudden now I'm going to be not looking for off the side. I'm going to be looking straight ahead, but I'm going to be finding that kelp again. And I'm going to find it again and then I'm going to find it again and the whole way we're running for five miles I'm going to keep locking onto it because basically you're looking for a needle in a haystack all day I mean how many yeah, times well, with the fin you just never come out when it's until right. somebody sees it with a naked eye yeah with no assistance from binoculars then you stay it with it and never get off of it yeah you say I got it so do you got it yet do kelp, you got it yet when you get a kelp and it's like five miles away you just go turn the boat okay and then get in that you, direction you just the way we do it is clocks and boats. 12 o'clock, just a clock. So you give a clock, okay, I got a kelp at four miles. It's at 200, you know, two o'clock, turn the boat. Okay, you're on it at 12, hit the autopilot. And then as soon as the guy hits the autopilot, I'm off of that. And going looking for the next and I'm bright looking and shiny for other object. Kelps. I'm looking for tuna, I'm looking for marlin, swordfish, whatever. But you know, we're going to go check this kelp regardless. Oh, yeah. And the, you know, and then you just go, okay, you refine it. Okay, yeah, you got it. You're still at We're still o'clock. going. Keep still going. got three and a half miles. <laughs> yep. So, um, yeah, no, it's, it's, it's everything. These things are an absolute game changer. And, gang, with the price of fuel today and... The price of maintaining your boat and the it it is a big investment. Jimmy and I aren't going to tell you it's not, but it's, it's a lifetime investment. It's, it's and it is it's forever. It's a life changing investment because if you're a fisherman or if you here's something funny that I was thinking of when I was driving over here. I work for a lot of guys that are in this club at Avalon, and they're big time marlin fish. We won't mention the name of the club. But these guys have been fishing marlin for 20, 30 years, and they don't have a pair on their boat. They don't. And I just think that's so crazy to fish marlin for day in and day out in a big-time club and not have a pair of gyro-stabilizing binoculars on the boat. It's just mild, right? Yeah, no, it's, it's wild. You <laughs> see them all the time. Everybody wants Jimmy. Let me tell you something. If Jimmy's with you on your boat, you pretty much know you're going to catch because <laughs> he's not coming out of the binoculars. 
Gross Peck's on your boat, you know you're going to catch because he ain't coming out of the binoculars. Steve's on the boat, you're going to catch because they're not coming out of the binoculars. That's how important these things are, though. Absolutely. They're not, but they know. Jimmy's not coming on the boat tomorrow and going out on the boat to go hang out and drink beer and pick his nose and eat his boogers. He's going out there to catch fish, and he knows how important. You're going to be in those from when the boat clears the break wall until basically it gets back, unless you have a whole bunch of fish you got to clean, right? That's it. You're staring in those all day because it matters. It makes it. Well, it's intelligence gathering for the next trip. Everything in, matters. I just saw this. I just saw that. I saw conditions change from when I went out. Because they're going out again the next day. It's never ending. It's never ending. It's just real time data. And all my all the East Coast captains that call me up, they they get us a pair and they just oh my gosh, this is such a change. How all come we never up. did this? And they call and they go and they first time oh they're not working. What do I do? I go we <laughs> the big time programs all have more than one set. Just. End of story. You can't. Right. You have to have at least one. You have to have. You one. have to. It's a game changer, gang. And think about this: the price of fuel alone is going to go way beyond the price of these gyro stabilizing binoculars. And all the trips you go out there looking for this offshore fish, that blue fin, the yellow fin, the dorado, all that stuff. Let's just say you're not a big time marlin fisherman. That's fine. It's going to matter for everything that swims. And just like Jimmy said, he's fish. he loves to fish sea bass. When he's getting to his zone, he's looking in the gyros and looking at everybody out there and seeing what depth they're all in, what what are they doing, who's bent, who's not bent. You can see all that three it's or four everything. miles away. It all matters. It all matters, gang. Like I say all the time on our website, your saltwater guide, everything matters from when you untie the boat till you tie it up and then all the stuff in the middle. That all matters. Everything matters. And if you t look at it and if you go about it half-heartedly, then you're probably your results are going to be yep. half-hearted. Well, the, the big difference for the, for the novice guy that is thinking about making the investment, you become someone that can go find fish. You show up, there's a bunch of boats, nothing's biting, and then you go, well, now what do I do? Where do I go? Well, you can be one of those guys that's going to find stuff because you can find it with the gyros where if you're just naked eye it just not you're the fishing same. for boats you're fishing for boats, for boats which is the number fishing. one thing i say don't do <sighs> don't fish for boats that sucks we hate it yep there's a it's lot of guys out there that spend their day going where's steve where's Pete? where's jimmy who gives a shit man where's the fish i want to find, find some your fish. Own fish i want to find some fish and believe me pete Jimmy and Steve, they all know where each other is because they had a plan before they left. Jimmy's going to go look in this area. Steve's going to look in that area. Pete's going to look in that area. They're not all going to go look in the same flipping area. How lame would that be? They're going to be 10, 12 miles apart from each other because they can see that far off the left side and off the right side, and they can cover the zones. It matters, gang. It matters. It matters. We're going to go over how to get a hold of Jimmy. He might even give you guys his personal phone number. I don't know, but it's on my website. You guys can find Jimmy. You're gonna want to get a pair of these binoculars. Let's see. We got that. I saw that came up here. Gyro Pros. Right? No, that's not you. What that's are we gyro doing? Binos. What are we doing? That should be part of my site there. They can get through there and so, find your phone number on the site. Right. Yep, this, my phone's all over the site, gyrobinos.com. If I can just add one thing to don't wait. Order them now. We've got this company. We have to make this company work. So I'm just asking to go to gyrobinos.com, buy them direct from the factory. we got to keep them going. we got to keep this ball rolling. We'll, you'll start seeing some advertising. I'll get put some stuff out. We just got to make sure the company stays afloat because there's thousands of these things out and they do need servicing at times. And if there's no one to fix them, this all very specialized tools to, to fix it. And we got to keep them going. We got to keep there's them no, going. Gang. There's no alternative with these four employees. They're all, uh, we got to keep them employed. We gotta and we got to checks rolling. And so if you wait till summer, it's going to get jammed up. Yeah, you're not going to get so any. So order them now. They'll be available, I was told, in about 10 days that 
be available to ship. Probably. And now, real quick, we're going to jump into something else real quick because we're almost out of time. I told Jimmy I'd only take an hour of his time. We're already 48 minutes into it or something. Gang, we got 50, 51, 52 degree water on the beach this year. It's the coldest we've seen in a very long time. You guys hear me babble on every day on the show. But here's Jimmy. He's been fishing for a living for a very, very long time. What do you think? This is what I think. It's going to be imperative that you are able to see past your bow this year. It's going to be imperative with the cold water, the different fishing that's going to go on. You're not going to see this giant influx of yellowfin tuna and dorado in our water. You might see it in September, but you, we're a long ways from it's, September right now. You're going to need to be able to look. It's a, it's really hard to call, you know, and I, I've heard they're talking El Nino currents. I don't know how true that is, but... <laughs> Um, the last time we had an El Nino with a winter like this, with super cold water, was... Um, 83. Well, that was... Uh, 91. Not uh, More recent than that was 97. Okay. So 96 was a hor horrific rain all winter long. Big, huge surf. Piers fell Got down. Restaurants fell off the end of piers and... It was a super gnarly winter like we're having now. But the next year was a, a super duper El Nino. I mean, it was um, very, very warm. Okay. Water came up. It was actually our best as when I fished with my dad and we were marlin fishing. It was our best year we ever had in oh, California. Wow. That's good info and, to have. And all the fish that year were uh, from basically the Nile Bank to the peanut, which is just below the Bunda Bank off Ensenada. Okay. Literally all the marlin were in there. Uh, there was one weekend, like during the Masters Tournament, the fish showed up at Santa Cruz Island for one weekend. We caught a bunch of fish, it was off the charts, and then they split, and they went back down to the Nine Mile Bank, and the rest of the season was there, and it was um, super, super blue water, hardly any bait. Uh, if you went to a porpoise school, you would catch a yellowfin Dolphin. tuna, you would catch a dorado, and you catch a marlin off of a porpoise school. Dolphin there wasn't school. Very... Dolphin. <laughs> oh, gosh. Whole heads. We call them whole heads. Yeah, there you go. Don't make the dolphin porpoise mistake. Call them whole heads. Um, that was kind of a different year. But, right. Um, something that has been interesting this winter with the super cold water is there's been big volume of tuna around Catalina and Clemente in January and February. Big spots of tuna. Um, I, it was, what, February? It, there was uh, five big, huge spots with a very few times that it was grease slick. My boss was flying in from uh, Nevada, and he told the pilot to go out behind Catalina. He saw five yeah. spots of tuna. Wow. We sent a guy out the next day, and he hooked two jumbos and lost both of them. Okay. That's and that was between Clemente and Catalina. Right. And then it was two weeks later, in between another storm, uh, a buddy of mine sent me video from Hamilton Cove of a Falmer a, mi a mile off Hamilton Cove. And that was That's two weeks later, know. late February. I haven't seen anything in March. Right. But but the wind hasn't really stopped blowing in But March. the wind is, yeah, it's been brutal. But the tunas are there, you know, and the guys that... At uh, Coronados are catching yo yo yellowtail. Right. And so there we're a, in, and there was a go around of sea bass at Catalina. Yes, there you know, was a month two ago. Day, two days ago. Oh well, I two don't know about two ago, days yeah. ago, but though two, a month ago in fifty five degree water, right. that's unheard of. Yeah, it's pretty. That's... When I fish Catalina in olden days, we it was generally like fifty nine sixty one degrees before the you sea even bass. thought about yeah. catching a sea bass. Yep. Yeah. yeah, but. It's, it's weird. I don't know what's. You don't know it. what's going to happen. Like Steve said a long time, you throw the history books away because nothing makes any sense anymore. Every the oceans and it just changing the, so the, fast. The biomass that came with the 2015 El Nino, the red crab, and then when the red crab started fading away, that bloom of anchovy was like none I've ever seen. Not yeah. They, was that 2017? Yeah, you couldn't go anywhere without was, giant uh, 
foamers yeah, you, of bluefin everywhere. <laughs> you go out and you have your machine is full of biomass across the whole channel going to the islands. We didn't, that didn't. I never was, seen that, that before. That wasn't always the that case. That was crazy. And People kept asking, what's this? I go, it's, I don't know. It's something I've never seen You know what the anymore. official word is? It's schmeg. Schmeg. There it's you go. Schmeg, man. There's a lot of schmeg on the machine. I don't know what it is. I don't know it, what it is, but we're not looking, stopping until yeah. they're jumping out of the water. <laughs> that, that wasn't always the case. We didn't no. always seen that, at least in my time on the water. But we didn't have very good equipment either. We didn't have the fathometers we got now. No, the fish finders. Yeah, you guys call. Paper graphs. Yeah, paper graphs. They yeah, worked we, fine. Or my dad had flashers. They had flashers. Yeah. That was it. And there was, and he had a pair of field glasses that Don't he used waste to watch that paper the rams. So you couldn't leave the fathometer on. No, no, you can't go. You had to know what you were looking for before you turned the machine oh, on because yeah. you burn up that paper. Yeah, the paper was expensive. And uh, Steve used to love to mess with Don Brockman. He used to draw little pictures in there. He'd roll the paper back, draw pictures in there, and then Donnie would be Donnie uh, be running the. That's not very nice. The sport fisher the next day, <laughs> and here come one of Steve's phenomenal pictures coming through. Oh no! The good old days. Well, gang, I want to thank you all for watching. Hopefully you uh, learned a little bit more about the gyro stabilizing binoculars. You have a better idea of what we're talking about when we talk about them all the time. I feel very honored that Jimmy spent a couple minutes with us. He's super busy. I'm going to take him to the airport right now. He graciously let us. It was cool to get out of the get out of Marley's room. I know a lot of you like to watch my monkey jumping around in the back, but no Marley today, but he'll be back on the show tomorrow. Thank you all for watching us. Give Jimmy a call, leave a message, get on there, get your gyros. Like he said, get them now because you're going to need them. And I'll see you guys tomorrow.